Y'all, I have a product to pitch. Have the NI homeless people measures in your city gotten so severe that there aren't any benches whatsoever left to sit on? Well, have no fear, because the chair pants are here. Sit down anywhere with chair pants. Oh, what's that? You think this is a terrible idea? Well then, get a load of this. Koalas have chair pants built into their very skeleton. Their spine ends in a cartilaginous pad, so they can perch in trees more easily. And this, friends, is probably the least stupid part of the koala's biology. Let me take you on an unforgettable journey to the eucalyptus forests of Eastern Australia, and I will introduce you to one of the dopiest inhabitants on the continent. To determine how many calories food has, it's burned above some water, and the change in temperature of the water determines the caloric value of the food. So, since eucalyptus, koala's main food source, is incredibly flammable, you'd think that means it's calorically and nutritionally rich, right? Wrong. Not only are eucalyptus leaves nutrient poor, they are also chock full of toxins. Plus, the high fiber and water content of the leaves means they can't eat much of these leaves before they get full and the fiber makes their digestion much slower. It'd be like if people tried to subsist on exclusively celery. Exclusively poisonous celery. Koalas have a few adaptations to compensate for their nutritionally bereft diet. First of all, they do as little as physically possible to avoid expending any energy. Koalas piddle away upwards of 80% of their time on sleeping, spending 18 to 20 hours per day asleep. They typically wake up and forage around at nighttime, so to enhance their night vision, they adapted creepy snake-like eyes so they look like the edgelords of the outback. They also cut out the most metabolically intense activity they could. Thinking. Koalas have one of the smallest brain-to-body ratios of any mammal, and it's 60% smaller than a typical marsupial's. At least they're still beating the bony-eared assfish, which has the smallest brain-to-body ratio of any vertebrate. It's unknown whether the koala's poor diet caused their brains to shrink, or whether their tiny brains caused them to choose such an awful diet. Not only are their brains small, but they're also smooth. Brains use folds and wrinkles to increase their surface area, so there are more possible connections for neurons to make and more complex thinking happening. This lets wrinkly-brained humans see some french fries on a plate and realize their food, even though they look awfully different than potatoes. Koalas, however, do not have this cognitive capacity. If a koala is literally drowning in an Olympic swimming pool of the juiciest eucalyptus leaves Australia has to offer, they will starve to death. They are too dumb to realize these are their favorite snack because they aren't attached to trees. To compensate for their minuscule brain and the difficulty of digesting eucalyptus, koalas have one of the largest digestive tracts in the animal kingdom in relation to their body size. So long are their intestines that there is an ancient Australian myth that a tribe of hunters killed a koala and then used its guts as a bridge to another world. To make a bridge to Mars when the red planet is at its closest to Earth, you would need the guts of over a hundred million koalas. So the tribe must have consisted of some pretty prolific hunters. Anyway, koalas have a gut-to-body ratio of 7 to 1, and it's so long because of the high fiber content in eucalyptus leaves. So to get the most possible nutritional value out of the leaves, they ferment them in their hindgut for up to four days, occasionally yakking up the half-digested leaves to re-chew them. This might be disgusting, but koalas are used to it. They are born into a more disgusting environment than Shrek's swamp. After joeys wiggle out from one of their mother's two wombs, they spend their first six months in her pouch, latched on to one of her teats, suckling from her milk that is about as nutritious as giving infants watered-down Coca-Cola. Joeys are born with working digestive and excretory systems, but unlike other marsupials, koala mothers don't clean out their pouches. So their joeys simply wallow in their own filth for months and months. Maybe this is also part of the reason why their brains are so small. But life doesn't get any better for the joeys once they emerge from their mother's pouch. To switch from a milk-based to a eucalyptus-based diet, they need to have the proper bacteria in their bellies to ferment the leaves. Did they get it from their mother's milk? No, of course not. To get their gut flora going, they straight up eat their mother's poop and they eat this poop for about a month. Well, you'd think a bond that strong would be unbreakable, right? Well, once a mom has fully weaned her joey and she's pregnant again, she displays aggressive behavior towards them until they leave her alone. Truly a parenting technique to aspire to. 
However, this aggressive behavior probably doesn't work all that well because genealogical studies have found that koalas have incredibly high levels of inbreeding. This might also help to explain their tiny brains. Also, 80% of koalas are infected with chlamydia. Just throwing that out there. Besides for the brief bond between mother and Joey, koalas are aggressively antisocial animals. If two males cross paths or, well, branches, they will engage in fisticuffs, biting each other and trying to shove each other off their trees. Luckily, almost half of koala's cranial cavity is filled with cerebrospinal fluid to absorb shock from any falls to protect the precious few brain cells the marsupials have after all the terrible dietary choices and inbreeding. Koalas, despite being adapted for life in treetops, fall fairly often. They have two opposable digits on their front feet and one opposable digit on their back feet. And they are one of only two animals outside of the primate family that have fingerprints, along with the North American Fisher cat. Even with an electron microscope, it can be tricky to distinguish between koala and human fingerprints. So it's really unknowable how many crimes have been pinned on people that were actually committed by koalas. Their fingerprints are unchanging, just like human prints, but you won't be able to identify a dead koala based on dental imprints. This is because of how koalas adapted their teeth to their strenuous job of chewing through eucalyptus leaves hours a day. Unlike how rodents constantly grow back their heavily used teeth, or how other herbivores like cows grow wide molars to reduce the erosion from chewing, koalas simply let their teeth wear away to useless nubs until they are unusably dull and the koalas simply starve to death. It's truly a mystery how koalas have remained alive for so long, but if I've learned anything from observing other drivers on the road, it's that someone can still go a long way, no matter how stupid they may be. Well, thanks for watching BioArk. If you've got a bigger brain than a koala, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to make your brain get even bigger, check out some of these incredible documentaries on Curiosity Stream next. Curiosity Stream documentaries are sort of the opposite of eucalyptus leaves. All of the thousands of titles on it are non-toxic, are not eaten by koalas, and have never started a forest fire in California. I would go so far as to say that Curiosity Stream titles, in fact, nourish your brain and even soul with knowledge and incredible cinematography. For instance, I cried tears of joy when I watched Cute Critters of Australia, which was done in collaboration with the Georgia Aquarium. But you know what else would bring me to tears of joy? If you signed up for the Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle for less than $15 a year by using the link curiositystream.com slash bioarc that's also down in the description below. If you signed up, I would cry enough tears of joy to fill all 11 million gallons of the tanks of the Georgia Aquarium, or fill a third of the Salton Sea in California. If you don't know what the Salton Sea is, or you do know what it is but you want to learn more about it, I conveniently have done a documentary on it, which you can find and watch over at Nebula. Nebula is a streaming platform that is not only streaming nominated, but is also koala approved. I, using my large and wrinkly brain, have personally made Nebula with some of my friends like Real Engineering, Lindsay Ellis, Sam from Wendover, and Joseph from Real Life Lore, who is such a good friend that I share a name, a birthday, and even a social security number with him. If you want to share a name, birthday, or social security with me, Joseph from BioArk, then you should check out Nebula. I can't promise that I will give you my social security number for signing up for Nebula using the link in the description below. But I can promise you that you will see a bunch of great content from independent educational creators on a platform where they aren't constrained by any stupid algorithms. For instance, Real Life Laura Joseph has started a series on modern wars and conflicts that would absolutely be suppressed by YouTube since, for some reason, they don't seem to want to put Coca-Cola ads in front of sensitive current events like the war last year between Azerbaijan and Armenia, which I made a Nebula original about. Best of all, on Nebula, you won't have to hear ads like this one, and you can see BioArk videos a few days early. By signing up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula, you're helping not only me, but the entire educational community. Thanks again for watching BioArk. Alright, since you lasted through that entire ad and made it here all the way to the end, here's one last special koala fact. The reason koalas hug trees is not only because it's super duper cute, but also because pressing their bodies up to cool trunks helps to reduce their internal body temperature by up to 68%. 
This helps them conserve water that would otherwise be wasted with sweat or licking, which is how most animals remove excess heat via evaporative cooling. Alright now, see you around next time.